Hello, and welcome back to the Coding Hub. In today's video, we will have a look at how you can install your website on uh, your laptop or mobile device. Have you ever noticed these uh, little install buttons up here, um, which allow you to install a website onto your computer? Have you ever wondered how you can make your website installable on people's devices? Well, in this video, we'll show you how you can achieve that with almost any website. But before we get started, please uh, check out our channel, like and subscribe to see more of, uh, of these types of videos. We do technology types of videos every week and we would love to have you on board. Okay, now let's begin. So first of all, this uh, particular installation uh, prompt that you can see here that's, um, that looks like this on Chrome, uh, might look a little bit different on some other browsers, is something that is automatically picked up uh, for things like progressive web applications, or PWAs, uh, depending on what you might have heard. And PWAs are uh, applications that have, um, that are compiled in uh, a language like Angular or React, and particular components of those can be installed onto your computer, and that will allow for offline use and push notifications and other things like that. And it's a really good way of, if you are to build a mobile uh, sorry, if you were to build a website that is kind of like a, an application, so take something like Trello or um, or Google Cloud Shell or um, anything that kind of provides a service uh, and is more of an application in the browser rather than a website like uh, like the Coding Hub, for example. Um, you will tend to see that those are ones that you can actually install, and the reason for that is they're actually applications written in a web-friendly language that then can run on your uh, phone or uh, computer, whatever that's Windows, Mac, or Chromebook. So in order to actually allow this prompt to show up, you have to meet a few criteria. And the number one criteria is to create a manifest uh, file. So the manifest file is the thing that describes your application to the browser. So things like short name uh, and name uh, for, for uh, your application. So short names will be displayed on the desktop or the user's mobile app drawer whereas the name is the actual name of your application, the icon for your application, the start URL, background colors, uh, theme colors, and these are all uh, help to shape your splash screen if on a mobile device you open up the app and it takes a little bit of time for it to load. So that describes your application. You can have a lot of different uh, settings in here and you should you should go check those out if you need something specific uh, but what you then do is you actually put this file at the root of where your website sits so uh, in the case of the coding hub so the coding hub isn't an application it's just the it's just the, a website where you can read tutorials and um, sign up to our newsletters and read some of our uh, products that we've got and stuff like that. So it's just a generic website for browsing really, and it's, not, it's nothing special. However, we can still turn this into a uh, installable application. And uh, just for full disclosure, for this particular tutorial, what I've done is actually installed, uh, because the Coding Hub runs in um, WordPress, I've actually installed a third party plugin called Super PWA, which actually does all of these setups for you um, and picks up things based on your settings in WordPress and populates them how, um, where and how they should be. And that way it will uh, set up your manifest and other files which we'll go over. Uh, but yeah, this plugin is great if you want to turn your WordPress website into a PWA. It literally takes as long as it takes you to install the plugin to uh, turn on and have it installable. Um, so I thoroughly recommend using that. So let's say you were to do this uh, by hand, let's say you had just a, a normal website that is not running on 
WordPress and you wanted to do this, you would have to upload your manifest.json file to the root directory of your file uh, on the web server where it sits. And once you've done that, you can actually open up your developer console to then look at what um, uh, at what it, the browsers managed to pick up from your manifest file and if there are any errors. So what what you need to do is open up your developer console and then go over to application and then you can click on manifest and that actually picks up your manifest file so you can see here the identity of our website so the name the short name uh, the theme color the background color the start url uh, and the icons and if we actually click on this it will actually show us our manifest.json file which is pretty cool and so that describes your website and unfortunately that is not the only thing you need to do so because um, you are essentially installing kind of an application onto your device or a phone it, that runs in a, a small web view provided by your browser you need to provide it something called a service worker so a service worker is something that's very specific to your um, to your um, application. So this isn't something that uh, you can just copy and paste like the manifest file. It, it is it's more specific to the, your particular website. Uh, the service workers <clears throat> take care of things like. Um, service uh, HTTP requests, uh, push notifications, and things that happen in the background of your application. And what happens if it can't reach the internet, for example, and when, when should it retry to make the request if it can, if there is now an internet connection. So uh, what I would suggest is actually to read more about this topic on our tutorial on the code hub and uh, we we send you to a link there of somewhere where it goes into a lot of detail on how to write um, certain components for service workers and, and how they work but if if you're like me and you have a wordpress website and you installed the super pwa plugin it sets up a service worker for you uh, and we can actually have a look at it here and what this service worker does is it takes all of the pages uh, as um, uh, so first of all it it, um, it registers the service worker and install uh, and it specifies how to install the application but once uh, that's done what it actually does is once you've accessed a particular URL on um, on that application once this is thought actually caches it and what that means is that if you don't have an internet connection and you're trying to visit a page on my website through the installed application uh, that you visited before then it will load the cached version of that page and allow you to still carry on reading and viewing it which is pretty cool um, so yeah in, in this service worker here that is created by the super PWA plugin caches the pages as you view them and allows users to use essentially a website offline um, so if you have like a, a lot of videos on your website or a lot of tutorials then this is great and um, because your users will be able to carry on reading and using those offline so I thoroughly recommend installing our website onto your phone so that you can carry on reading our tutorials um, on your commute or wherever you don't have internet um, and hopefully they'll be helpful to you. Uh, and one thing that I forgot to mention is once you've created your manifest file you actually need to add a uh, link to it in your uh, head so in your head of your HTML file you need to add a link uh, with a row of manifest and a href to your uh, manifest.json file um, and that will link your manifest file to your website and allow um, something like Google Chrome to uh, pick that up so I hope this tutorial has been useful and uh, gave you an idea of how to go about setting up your PWA as a uh, installable application for users. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.